In March 2008, 14 monks carrying Tibetan flags were beaten and arrested at the Jokang. Well, walk back to the Sarah Monastery, which I really hope is not up there. Uh, and uh, so far we're gonna see what's inside. Whew. The following day, 600 monks from here at the ancient Serra Monastery went on a peaceful march in protest. The Chinese cut off all food and water from both the Serra and Drepung monasteries. And it was this series of events that led to the worst riots in Lhasa for decades. The Chinese invasion of 1950 destroyed many of the buildings at Serra, a holy school that was founded back in 1419. But even now, stepping briefly inside one of the buildings feels like stepping back in time. We slipped through an open doorway and found ourselves in the kitchen, which feeds hundreds of people every day. Large amounts of butter tea is prepared here and distributed later to the monks in the great assembly hall. Though much has changed over the past hundred years, those who live here in the shadow of the mountain have done all they can to preserve their way of life. goes out and the residents of Sarah make their way to the Great Hall. We watch as the tea we saw being prepared is shared out between them. These very monks, who just a short time ago had dared to speak out against Chinese oppression. Located around five kilometers from the center of Lhasa, Serra does provide a little tranquility for those who live there. Okay, we are now at the Serra Monastery. Now, Serra actually is a type of Rose bush. It's a white rose, so this is technically the white rose monastery, you could say. Uh, we're up in different parts of the temple. We can't show you much of it. Again, they don't allow filming. Um, a lot of it's been destroyed due to the Cultural Revolution, and they're rebuilding it now. But the place has got a great view, as you can see all the way around there. Paintings on there. There's prayer flags up that way. It's only the really tough monks can get up there, huh? <laughs> Almost a five thousand meters high. Like the Jokhang, it is a place of pilgrimage for many Tibetans. And the debates which take place here on the teachings of Buddhism are legendary. The current Dalai Lama himself took his exams here in 1959. First, they prostrate in, in, the, in front of the Chokan Chambos after they come late, then they come in here to doing the same things. Unsurprisingly, the guide mentioned nothing of the riots or the Chinese crackdown on the monastery that started them. He did tell us, however, that while only a few hundred remain, Sarah was home to as many as 5,000 monks prior to the Cultural Revolution. Mm -hmm. 
So is there anything, I know there's a lot of them wear their coats with one sleeve out. Toto says not special, it's used to nomad people like that. Uh, so they just, it's a style choice. Okay. Yeah. With limited time left in Laza, we left the monastery and set off back across the city. It was here that our police escort left us. And in just the short drive back to the city center, we saw army vehicles amassed at the sports stadium and armed riot police guarding the petrol stations. All right, now we're at the Nobolinka, which from what the sign said translates as Jewel Park from Tibet. And this is where the Dalai Lama stayed in the summer. And, uh, all of them, I think, from about the fifth on, have been here. Uh, still a home to some of the monks, but not as many anymore. So we're gonna take a look around and see some uh, neat things they got here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. The Norbalinka maintains a far more relaxed atmosphere than the troubled monasteries. And indeed, the current Dalai Lama himself is said to have much preferred living here than in the Patala. A steady stream of tourists visit the Summer Palace. And while there are no pictures of His Holiness to be found anywhere, the fact that a number of his buildings and possessions remain does much to lighten the mood. But with our schedule dictated by our permits, it was soon time to leave the gardens and press on. Okay, so we've been in Laza for the last two days. So we're getting ready tomorrow at about nine to leave the city of Laza and we're gonna travel out to the middle of nowhere. But out here, nothing is ever that simple. Well, originally our plan was we were gonna get in the car and head down for 10 hours towards Yamchuk. Unfortunately, there's a discrepancy with our permit. The guy at the Tibetan Bureau in Shanghai and his infinite intelligence wrote 2008 instead of 2009. Uh, it turns out that, you remember, I said we had to go down to the Bureau to get him to change the date on our permit. Well, we come down and the guy showed up, but wouldn't you just know, he didn't bring the key with him. The mistake meant that up until now, we had been in Tibet illegally. However, two hours later, the date was changed and we were finally able to follow the river out of the city. Called the Kichu. Kichu. Uh, Kichu rivers. And at some point, the rainy season is all of the full waters. So it comes all the way up to the here, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm in the beside of the road. Wow. Yeah. During the summer. Jeez. Soon after leaving Laza, we were confronted with clear evidence of the exploitation of natural resources in Tibet. Both chromium and copper are found here in far greater quantities than in China. And even our guide felt it necessary to point out what this long line of trucks was doing. Yes. Twenty cars, trucks. Twenty of them. Yeah. Where are we, Derek? Well, we're on the Friendship Highway, just past the airport, uh, Laza Airport. So we're about an hour down the road. We've stopped at a police checkpoint for the driver there. Make sure that he's copacetic. Although we had left the city, it seemed our whereabouts were still being monitored. So what are the uh, checkpoints uh, looking for? Checkpoint at any unit, uh, each seven kilometers, one hour. Then like the 100 kilometers between the one checkpoint and one checkpoint. 100 kilometers distance? Yeah, it's stations. If you drive uh, it, two minutes, one minute early, and then 110 minutes, 1,000 miles. So you don't go off to any other places? So you don't disappear off along the road? 
as we passed white ladders painted on the rocks, inviting deities to descend to Earth, we gradually drew nearer to our first mountain pass. 4,860. 4,860. Which is what we call the Kambala Pass. Behind here, we can see the then Holy Lake, Yangrok Yomzo. And then one of the snow mountains, Nijing Tanglas, Nijing Kangsa, right? On the other side of this mountain was Yamjok, one of the four great holy lakes of Tibet. During the time of the 8th century, the, the one of the India master, Bama Sambo, he meditation near the lake. Then once the nomads people offered him the yogurt, but he didn't tell him. He just threw it down in the small lake. The 337 kilometer route between Lhasa and Shigatse is part of the immense friendship highway connecting Tibet with Kathmandu. Oh my God. Holy hell. The entire highway covers a sprawling 900 kilometers and teeters on the edge of outrageous mountainsides at altitudes as high as 16,000 feet. The village we had passed at the foot of the mountain appeared now as a white dot far below. So, um, what the hell? We're at the same level as those bloody snow mountains. That ain't a good sign. <laughs> I'm not pointing the camera up anymore, I'm pointing them down. <laughs> the top, is it? Yes. Oh, all right. Why don't you ride a yak over there, play tennis or five yards? To ride a yak? Yeah. Well, uh, think about that. Thank you. When the horrendous drive finally ended, the mountain dropped away to reveal a truly stunning view. I don't usually say things on camera, but I have to say that was probably the most terrifying drive of my life. But it's worth it, because we're at the top, and we're alive, and we have a wonderful It was hard to believe that this shining turquoise lake, ringed with white peaks, was over 4,000 meters above sea level. All right, well, we've hit over the mountain. Watch Joe cry for about 15 <laughs> minutes. And off in the distance, you got some nice big snowy mountains. Now, what Joe doesn't realize is the next pass is over them. <laughs> so we're going to have to do that. So we're a good 5,000 almost some meters in the air. And uh, now we're going to go down a little. Even the driver couldn't resist capturing the spectacular scenery as we stared out towards our next challenge, the colossal white mountains on the horizon. <laughs> 